All right, next up is uh, section 8.4, vector and parametric equations of, pl of a plane uh, in three space, okay? So obviously uh, planes have to exist in three space and uh, we talk about uh, four particular situations. Uh, the, the section starts on page 453 in the textbook. So we're really rattling off uh, chapter eight here and uh, we'll get talking about this. I want to do these uh, slides in a little bit of a different order though, okay? So first up, I want to talk to, to define a vector equation in a plane and it's uh, done right here with this uh, with this diagram and uh, what we talk about what we need required elements of what we need for a plane. So back in, in uh, chapter six, we talked about spanning space and linear combinations of vectors, vectors being dependent on one another to, to create or establish uh, this concept of a, of a space. And that, that really is the basis of, of development of, of planes. Now you guys talk, have talked about planes. We've talked about planes back in Cartesian graphing back a couple of years ago. So the XY plane okay, is a plane. And if you think about the XY plane, it's defined by the origin and two axes, right? The x-axis and the y-axis. So if you think of those as, as a point and two vectors in a sense, both those axis arms, okay, that really spans or creates this space, this plane space, this x-y plane. So we talk about how we define or we establish that plane. Um, planes are often considered and looked at in, in this particular situation here. So here's here's this plane. Okay. Uh, now one thing you're going to notice here is planes are often uh, defined by the symbol pi. And we we uh, they, so the Greek uh, Greek letter pi that you're familiar with often defines a plane for for what reason I, I'm not sure, uh, but you'll you'll see that notation. And we're going to notice here that we've got a point. Okay. And then two vectors here. Now we've done combinations back in chapter six like this. And we talked about situations like that, but we're really looking at it, okay, creating this, okay, this plane space here. Now, when we write equations, the vector equations for planes, okay, we need, okay, we need a point okay, and we need two direction vectors. Okay, so similar to the origin and the x-axis and the y-axis, or in this case, okay, we're going to pull ourselves away from, when we talk about vectors, we're going to pull ourselves away from these anchor points and just really clearly talk about any arbitrary point, okay, plus any two direction vectors, plus their parameters, right, because their parameters generate all the spaces in between, okay, but that's really what we look at, okay, okay, when we, I'm just going to clear this off here. I can select. Okay, I'll just okay, delete. Okay, okay and delete. I'm just gonna. So we really talk about how we define okay, these planes. Okay, and think about the, the things we need in order to establish these equations here. And like I said, okay, we need we need a point and two direction vectors. And the two direction vectors have to be separate and unique, okay? They can't be parallel direction vectors. They can't be combinations of one another. We need two separate direction vectors, their parameters, and a unique point. And now we often, also when we talk about vector equations, okay, we okay, use that statement here. So that's what we need. Okay, so the different situations we can have for planes. We can determine a plane, an equation for a plane, if we're given three points, okay? If we're given two parallel lines, we can always get the, okay, what, what's our criteria? We need one point, okay, we need one point and two direction vectors, okay? So if we're given Okay, a situation where we have two intersecting lines, okay, that's a situation C, we can write a vector equation, okay, and such a situation D, if we're given a line and a point, we can write a vector equation because we can find one point and two direction vectors. Okay, so every one of these situations, okay, given three points, two parallel lines, two intersecting lines, or a line and a point, will always allow us to find one point and two direction vectors, and if we have 
one point two direction vectors, we can find a vector equation of a plane. And if we have a vector equation of a plane, we can then find okay, a parametric equation just by expanding and a symmetric equation okay, by rearranging and solving the ratios here. Okay, so let's get into working with some equations of planes. All right, so given, given an equation of a plane, a vector equation of a plane, so there's our vector equation, there's our point, okay, and there's our two direction vectors. So we have two points on the plane, a trivial and a non-trivial point. Okay, well, a trivial point, actually I'm going to pause this and go off to my, um, uh, my uh, smart notebook, okay? Okay, a little bit better of a workspace here. Okay, so we've got our plane. We've got our plane defined by the, the symbol pi and a vector equation. We've got our point, we've got our direction vector and another direction vector. So we want to find two points on this plane, okay? A trivial point, okay, is the obvious point. And in this case, our obvious point is the point negative one, zero, two. Okay, that's defined in the equation, the vector equation. A trivial point is also when you set the two parameters equal to zero. Okay, so we neglect the direction vectors in a sense, okay, and we just state our trivial point. Now, a non-trivial point, okay, is a point that's not so obvious, okay? So for a non-trivial point, okay, we have to set our parameters equal to some value. Now, it can be any value we want, so I'm just going to set, I could go negative 1 here, it doesn't matter. It could be 1 and 0, it could be 0 and 1, it could be 2 and 3, it could be 2 negatives. It really doesn't matter. They're just arbitrary, random values for the parameter here. And what happens then, okay, is I want to find my point. I'm going to find my point x, y, z, and it's defined by my equation. And I'm going to put, but now I'm going to replace my parameter s with 1 and 0, 0, 1. And I'm going to replace my parameter t with a negative 1. And it's going to be 1, 0, negative 1. OK, so now I need to do a little bit of work here. Okay, it's not as easy as okay, just throwing values in here. We have to do this carefully. That's going to be a negative 1, a 0, and a positive 1. Now I just have the string here together. Negative 1 plus 0 and negative 1, that'll be negative 2. 0, 0, and 0, and then my z component is 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 4, okay? So that other point here, okay, is the point B, negative 2, 0, and 4, okay? And that's, again, that's just, those are just arbitrary, random values that aren't so trivial here. Okay, find one line on the plane, okay? So one line on the plane. Well, we have actually two obvious lines on the plane here. Here's a line. I can take my point and write half of my, in a sense, right? I could take my point and write half of my uh, vector equation of my plane, and I could do it for another line too. And that's just an easy way to come up with lines. So the a plane, remember, is made up of a point and two lines here, okay? And the point happens to fall on or lie on both of these lines. So that's an easy way to come up with a line that happens to be on a given plane. Find your vector equation that path that of, of a line that's parallel to this plane and passes through the origin. Well, our origin point is the point 0, 0, 1. And if our required vector equation okay, passes through, sorry, is parallel to the given plane, but passes through this point, I can use the, the point that I'm required to, to use, and I can use the two direction vectors. Okay, and I know that it satisfies the conditions of my question. This new this new vector equation of, of this required plane, okay, is parallel to it, has the same direction of the original plane, but it's going through another point here. Okay. So that's okay, straightforward enough, I think. Good. All right, all good.
All right, a parametric equation of a plane it just requires you to expand okay, at, the, at the vector equation. Okay, so that's easy enough to do. I think we've done this lots, except we have our three components here. So let's do our x negative 1 plus 0s plus 1t. Okay, well, that's I should write that a little differently. Okay, so that should be x equals, let's drop my 0 and it's a negative 1 plus t. My y component is 0 plus 1s minus 2t. Well, I can clean that one up as well, too. That's a better way to write that would be, okay, s minus 2t. Then my z component okay, is 2 minus s plus 0t. And we don't write it like that either. We write z to be 2 minus s. Now keep in mind that we need to see, okay, we need to see the word plane in here in order to make sure that, and notice that we've got two, if we're given a parametric equation, notice that we've got two parameters. Okay, so we conclude that it's a plane. Make sure that we're aware of that. Always be aware of what you've got in your equation and what you're given and what you work with here. Okay, let, let's, next up here, let's determine we're given three points in our plane here. Okay, three points in our plane. So we've got, um, okay, we've got, um, okay, let's find out our two okay, unit vectors. Again, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go and copy this. I'm just going to pause this and go and copy this into my, okay, smart notebook. Okay, so I'll be back in, okay, one. Okay. So the first thing I have to do when I'm given three points is find okay, two direction vectors here. So I'm going to call the first direction the vector that connects A and B. Okay, so that'll be, okay, so I'm going to take B2, take away 0. And then negative 1, take away 1 is negative 2. And then 0, take away negative 1 is positive 1. And I'm going to find my second direction vector. In that case, it'll be AC. Now you could do BC as well if you wanted to find that one as well. Okay, but what we're trying to establish is just any two direction vectors. So this one's going to be AC, and that'll be zero take away zero, zero take away one, and one take away negative one. And that'll be one take away negative one will be two. Now my vector equation is easily written. I need a point. Well, I have three. I'm going to choose any point, and then I'm going to introduce a parameter and write my first direction vector, and then my second parameter, and my second direction vector. And then I need the... Okay, and that's a vector equation that describes okay, this plane in here. Okay, um, I'm going to go back and uh, fix one from, okay, from my previous slide here. I just want to back track a little bit to this question okay. and talk about find one line on the plane. I know I gave you okay, this line okay, and then, then the other line here, negative 1, 0, and 2. But I want to show you how to find a completely different line here. Okay, So what I want to find is I'm going to try and find a, a different okay, direction vector. Okay, that defines my line here. And I'm going to use my two points that I, I used in, above here. I think I had a point negative 1 and 0 uh, and 2. And I also had a point. I'm going to do another non-trivial point here. I'm going to let s equal 1, t equal 1. And I get, the, I get the point 0, 0, 2. So I'm going to use these two points to find a direction vector. Okay, so I'm going to use my a trivial point and a non-trivial point. And I'm going to call this one A and this one B. Okay, and I'm going to find the direction vector between A and B. So that'll be 0 take away negative 1 is 1. 0 take away 0 is 0. And 2 take away 2 is another 0. So my vector equation of a line that lies in this plane I just need a point. I'm going to use my given point, and I'm going to then use my new direction vector here. And that's just a different line here that requires okay, sometimes a different way to look at it. One, but they're not they're not obvious. 
lines that are defined in the plane here. Okay, let's get back to, we did this one. Okay, let's get back to a situation where we have two, okay, two parallel lines. Okay, so we have two parallel lines here. Now I know they're parallel because they're direction vector. Okay, it's a combination of each other here, and the direction vector for this one is 0, 1, 2. It looks like they're connected, so if I take negative d1, that equals d2. Okay, so my lines are parallel. Okay, so what do I need to find it? a plane, a vector equation of a plane, and also a parametric equation. But we're going to do a vector equation first, okay? Now what do I need? I need a direction vector. I can use, okay, I can use one of my direction vectors. I can use one of my points, okay? So let's use, let's use our point, one, two, one. I'm going to call that A. Okay, I can use a direction vector. Okay, now let's use zero, negative one, and negative two. But my other direction vector, okay, I can't use the second direction vector in from line two, but I can use the second direction vector by finding okay, the, this direction vector, the direction vector between the two points. And then if I have okay, a point and then two direction vectors, there's my spanning space, my plane, right, that takes this up. So my direction vector okay, is going to be three take away one, four take away two, and zero take away negative one here. Okay, and that'll be my direction vector okay, of the two points between the two points here. Okay, okay I, that'll be two, two, and negative one. Okay, so now I have a vector equation. Okay, and there's my point one, two, one plus s. My first direction vector, and then t my second direction vector here. So all I did, all I needed was another a second direction vector and I found that second direction vector okay, by okay, finding the, the, the line that connects these two points on my two separate ones here. All right, so that's easy enough. My parametric equation then, okay, as I just expand x equals one plus zero s plus two t. Okay, a better way to write that is x equals one plus two t. My y component was two minus s plus two t, and my z component okay, is one minus two s minus t. And I'm just going to write. I'm going to write this. And let's just erase a little bit of this. Let's just erase okay. a little bit of this, and we'll clean this up a little bit. So I think that was a plus a 1 plus 2t. Okay, and I just have to go finish these parametric equations off. OK, does that make sense? All right, we've got another situation here. We've got two intersecting lines. Okay, they're given by these two things. The first thing we have to do is find this point. Now I have my two direction vectors. Okay, that's going to be this one and this one here. I just need this point here. The first thing is I do is I need to find this, this point of intersection here. Well, let's see if I can find the point of intersection here. Again, I'm going to go to a slide. So I'm going to pause this and go to a slide so I have a little bit more workspace. Okay, so here's the situation. Um, Okay, we've got two intersecting lines, and we want to find this point of intersection first, because that's what we need. We need our point here. We need that point, and it's a point that's common to both of the, the lines, so it's common to both of the, the direction vectors, and we, we would then be able to write this equation for this plane right in here, this, this span equation. Okay, let's expand line 1 to parametric equations. So line 1, I've got x equals 0 minus s. I've got y equals 0 plus 0, okay, and z equals 1 plus 0. All right, in line 2, I've got x equals negative 3 plus 0t. I've got y equals 0 plus 0, and I've got 
z equals 1 plus 2t. Okay, so when we write parametric equations out for both the lines, we then equate components. And what I mean by that is I set the x's equal to each other, and I set the y's equal to each other, and I set the z's equal to each other, and I hope that that allows me to solve for x, y, and z, and that'll be my point of intersection here. Okay, so let's equate the x's first, okay? And with the x's, I've got negative s in my line 1, and that is equal to negative 3. Well, s equals 3. Okay, that's good. That's good. Do I have any other place where there's an s? I don't. Okay, that's all right. Let's see how that goes. Now let's equate my y's. I've got 0 equals 0. Well, that's good. That's a consistent system. So I can still keep going and solving this. And then finally equate my z's. I've got 1 equals. So that's 1 equals 1 plus 2t. Okay, well, I, I can solve for t with that one. That's 0 equals 2t, or t equals 0. Okay, so either way, I can use s equals 3 into this equation right here, or I can use t equals 0 into this equation right here and get my point of intersection here. Now, there's an obvious one that I'm going to use, and I think that's t equals 0. Okay, if t equals 0, my point of intersection Okay, then it's just my trivial point right here. It's negative 3, 0, and 1. Okay, I think I'd get the same if I let if I let s equal 3. I think I'd get the same. Okay, if I did that, I think I'd get 0. I think I'd get minus 3. I should get the same. 0 plus 0. Okay, and then 1 plus 0. Yeah, I'd get the same point of intersection. Either way, I need to find that point of intersection. And I just did. Okay, right here. So now I can write my vector equation, use my point, and I use my two direction vectors. The first one is negative 1, 0, and 0, and my second one is 0, 0, 2. Okay, and then that's my, that's my plane. these two lines and that's this plane right in here okay, and it spans the whole space all right let's get back to I think the last example here and it's probably the fourth case here get okay, the fourth case I'm not sure which one we've done here okay so we've got to find a vector equation that's determined by a point and a line so in this case I have a point and I've got my line. Okay, so how we do this, very similar to an example I did earlier here. First thing is we have to find another direction vector. And I'm going to call this direction vector 2, and it's going to be between my, okay, my two points here. I think I called this one. Okay. going to be okay the, the point from A to P so I'm going to call that okay. Okay, so vector from A to P and that'll be one take away one and then I'm going to go negative five take away one and then I'm going to go nine now I'm just showing you the steps in the past. I haven't done this. Okay, but it's not a big deal. One times minus one is zero. Okay. Negative five take away one is negative six. Okay. And nine take away one is it is eight. Okay, so that's my your second direction vector. Now one thing you can do that you may see in the back of the textbook for answers is I could write, I could factor out something here, okay? So I, I literally could reduce this as okay, 0, okay, negative 3, and 4 here, and that's sort of just division by 2. Now, theoretically, it's not equal, okay, but I have factored out, I factored out a 2, and these direction vectors are often written 
by taking a greatest common factor out. It's sort of sort of like a lowest terms thing. Okay, now it doesn't prevent me from still writing a correct vector equation here, and that would be okay, so I'm gonna use my given point, right? Okay, one one one. I'm gonna write my given direction vector, and then I'm gonna write my new direction vector. And then I'm gonna write my restrictions here on my domain here or to sort of my parametric definition of my domain here okay so and really would it have mattered if I put in negative six and eight here because it's all about the factoring right it's all about just changing that parameter so the parameter allows for that and the the, the other thing too is the vector zero negative three and four is going in the same direction as zero negative six and eight so really this is something you should be aware of and you might see and you're going to notice from the, probably this point on that every one of those direction vectors are always written in, in the lowest terms. And in a sense, it's like a lowest terms thing. Okay, so that's the last one. That was a vector equation of a plane. We just found this space in here, and that's defined, that defines the whole thing here. Okay, that uh, that spans that plane and creates that plane, sort of adjusts that plane. So so planes, planes equations aren't, aren't difficult to work with. Okay, we have to understand we need a point and two direction vectors. Planes, think of planes though as a, as a new concept. This is going to be hard doing it online. If we were in class, we'd do some visuals here, but I'd, I'd strongly encourage you to get online and, and look at look at planes and look at uh, sort of how we create planes and the, the concept of a plane. Think of plane, I, I know in, in past classes, we think of planes, uh, and I use visuals, uh, your desktop is a plane, right? Okay, so if you're sitting in a desk and you look down at, and see your flat space that's in front of you, that's a plane. Okay, you can look out over over a pond and see a, a, the plane of, of the top of the, the surface of the water. Okay, you can look out over a field and see a plane. Okay, and literally that's the, the definition of a plane, just a flat space sort of spread out a long way. You can look out and see for sort of an infinite... Okay, if you're in a in a, in a wide, uh, large space, uh, outdoor space, you can look out and see just a long, long plane, okay, of a, of a shape here. I'd also in class bring in a bunch of cue cards or Bristol board and let, sort of hold those up, orient them a little bit differently, and hold them up in the classroom in the space that makes the classroom that 3D space, right? Length, width, height. And if I had a piece of Bristol board or cue cards, those would be planes that existed in that three space. So that's really, a, in a way, how we would see this. And I want you to look at these visuals, go online and see if you can understand that. And if need be, we use some visuals here to help us get this. I think that's it for the home, or the chapter 8.4. And there's some homework questions that we're gonna uh, work on and assign. They'll be posted uh, later in the homework page. Thanks and good luck.